welcome once again today we are going to talk about the topic molecular methods involved in environmental monitoring of pollutants once again this is going to be our presentation outline the background we will look at what pollutants are then we will look at some environmental molecular methods you will get to know what the meaning of pollutant monitoring is then we will look at types of molecular methods then we draw a conclusion background the elimination of a wide range of pollutants from the environment is an absolute requirement to promote a sustainable development of a society with low environmental impact. New methodological breakthroughs in sequencing, genomics, proteomics, bioinformatics, and imaging are producing vast amounts of information. The application of biological sciences generally and molecular biology techniques particularly in monitoring environmental pollution has become increasingly prominent simultaneously with development of the DNA technology or techniques. Pollutants. We say a pollutant is a substance introduced into the environment that has harmful effects and a pollutant may cause long or short-term damage by changing the growth rate of plant or animal species or by interfering with human amenities comfort health or property values some pollutants are biodegradable and therefore will not persist in the environment in the long term however the degradation products of some pollutants are themselves polluting, such as the products dichlorodiphenol, dichloroethylene (DD) and dichlorodiphenol, dichloroethane (DDD), produced from the degradation of DDT. Environmental molecular methods or EMMs. Environmental molecular methods is a collective term that describes a group of advanced and emerging techniques used to analyze biological and chemical characteristics of soils, sediments, groundwater, and surface water. Traditionally, cultivation based methods like heterotrophic plate counts or most probable number analysis have been used to estimate numbers of microbes and the biodegradation potential of a site. Environmental molecular methods are important and valuable because they can provide key information not available using traditional analytical methods. In many cases, specific microorganisms are responsible for the degradation of specific pollutants. EMMs are used to determine the biochemical capabilities of microbes present in the environment. EMMs can be used to detect and quantify these known microbes, enzymes, and or genes involved in specific biodegradation processes without growing microbes in the laboratory. Other environmental molecular methods can be used to determine whether microorganisms are actively degrading specific pollutants and can also identify currently unknown microbes involved in these processes. Example, an electron donor was added to stimulate biodegradation of chlorinated solvents, example TC, in groundwater. Quantitative PCR can be used to detect and quantify the genes encoding the enzymes responsible for complete degradation of vinyl chloride to ethene and to monitor the effectiveness 
of the treatment approach. Advantages of Environmental Molecular Methods or EMMs Analysis is typically performed directly on the environmental sample. There is usually no need for microbial cultivation, making environmental molecular methods more precise and, in most cases, less time-consuming than traditional microbiological methods. Molecular methods can evaluate a broad spectrum of microorganisms and biodegradation processes. 3. Molecular methods are sensitive. Some can detect as few as 100 cells or genes in a sample or very low chemical concentrations. Analytical results are available in a short turnaround time, typically within a couple of days for most molecular methods. Molecular methods define microbial characteristics such as community, species, and or activity if it can be used to monitor or improve remedial processes. Molecular methods can be performed on a variety of environmental sample types, such as surface water, groundwater, soil, and sediment. Molecular methods have been shown to be valuable at each stage of environmental management including site characterization, remediation, monitoring, and closure. Now, limitations of environmental molecular methods. One, even as some EMDs have become readily available and applied in the field, Widespread understanding and acceptance by consultants, regulators, and stakeholders have not yet been achieved. Many molecular methods are limited to currently known biodegradation pathways and gene sequences. It is possible for elevated concentrations of minerals, metals, or organic matter to interfere with laboratory analysis. Technical expertise is required to evaluate environmental molecular method applicability, select the appropriate EMM, and interpret the results. Standard EMM protocols for sample collection, storage, analysis, and quality assurance or quality control have not yet been established across laboratories. Currently, environmental molecular method analysis may be more expensive than the traditional site investigation analysis. Principle of molecular methods. The ability, the, sorry, the ability of microorganisms to degrade contaminants requires that they have the appropriate genetic information or genes that confess a particular biochemical activity to this microbial cell. Some molecular methods detect and quantify the presence of genes themselves, while other molecular methods detect the products of these genes when they are expressed and lead to biochemical activity. Most proteins or enzymes act as catalysts that the cell needs in order to metabolize or break down a contaminant. A typical environmental sample can contain many thousands of different microorganisms. However, only a small fraction may possess the necessary genes to break down a specific contaminant. Environmental molecular methods, including PCL, quantitative PCL, microarrays, and fluorescence in situ hybridization of fish are used to detect and or quantify genes that indicate the presence of specific contaminant degrading microbes or genes for specific enzymes that biodegrade specific contaminants. So this is a picture showing the central dogma of molecular biology. 
So from DNA replication, the DNA is transcribed into RNA or messenger RNA, which is then translated. That information is translated in making or manufacturing proteins. So this is how uh, the genes that we talk about are being expressed. Pollutant monitoring. Measuring pollutants in the environment can be carried out at several points along the pathway from the source to the target. And these include A. Process monitoring. That's within an industrial process. B. Emission monitoring. At the point of emission to the environment. C. Environmental monitoring at a network of points in the environment. D. Exposure monitoring at the surface of the target. E. Biological monitoring within a target. So this is a flowchart or a schematic pathway of pollutants. For what we talked about, your characterization, process, then the consequence. So you can see the impact at the end here, human health, ecological or agricultural economic impact. So let's go into detail. Environmental monitoring. This environmental monitoring describes the processes and activities that need to take place to characterize and monitor the quality of the environment. Environmental monitoring is based on scientific observations of changes that occur in our environment. Monitoring schemes may differ greatly in their extent in space and time from a small area around an emission source a continuous measurement to global monitoring programs. Any monitoring system is an expensive exercise and the costs rise sharply when increasing numbers of samples and increasing numbers of variables are being monitored. Monitoring of pollutants of concern in the environment is required to obtain reliable information which documents the quality of environment as a part of an environmental management system, both in public and private sectors. Such information provides the basis for decision making and the development of environmental management strategies. It should be noted that monitoring and characterization of environmental pollutants put strong demands on the analytical techniques to be applied. In general, environmental monitoring specialists focus on four major areas. That's air, soil, water, and biota. So, air quality monitoring. Air pollution is a growing concern in both developed and non-developed countries across the globe. Not only does polluted air affect the health of the planet, but then it also has detrimental consequences for the well-being of the population. As air pollution concentration is heavily influenced by the wind, anemometer data is almost always taken into account when carrying out environmental monitoring of air quality. Soil quality monitoring. Farming is an integral part of the world's food production, while the regeneration of forests and jungles is central to keeping the air clean and free of carbon dioxide. As such, 
a large number of environmental monitoring projects shine the spotlight on soil quality, including looking at factors such as soil pollution. Water quality monitoring. Gathering and analyzing information on water quality is an essential part of making sure lakes, rivers, oceans, estuaries, and other bodies of water are safe and sanitary. Chemical condition is of key importance, with specialists focusing on the presence of oxygen, nutrients, oils, pesticides, and metals. Physical conditions such as flow, temperature, sediments, and erosion are taken into account while biological measurements of plant and animal life is also used to determine quality. Reasons for establishing monitoring systems. Why do we establish monitoring systems? One. To provide information about the substances being emitted to the environment, their quantities and sources. 2. To determine the distribution and transformation of chemicals in the environment. 3. To determine changes in environmental conditions with time. 4. To provide a sound basis for the development of standards, regulations, and other legal requirements relating to the protection of human health and the environment. Also, to determine how well regulatory measures are being met. To provide information about the relationship between exposure to chemicals and biological effects. to test and redefine models on transport and transformation of chemicals in the environment. Environmental monitoring is a tool to assess environmental conditions and trends, support policy development and its implementation, and develop information for reporting to national policymakers international forums, and the public. Now let's look at types of molecular methods. We have fingerprinting, fluorescent in situ hybridization of fish, sandwich hybridization arrays, microarray, Stable isotope probing, enzyme activity probes, metatranscriptomics, PCR methods, automated ribosomal intergenic spacer analysis, and next generation sequencing, probably known as NGS. So let's look at microbial fingerprinting. Microbial fingerprinting methods are a category of techniques that differentiate microorganisms or groups of microorganisms based on their unique characteristics of a universal component or section of a biomolecule, example, phospholipase, DNA, or RNA. Fingerprinting methods are used to provide an overall view of the microbial community, indications of microbial diversity, and insight into the types of metabolic processes occurring in the aquifer, and some can be used to identify a subset of microorganisms present in the sample. This capacity is relevant and important because biodegradation inherently depends on the types and abundance of microorganisms present in the subsurface. For example, 
Microbial fingerprinting methods can identify when adverse conditions like low pH, either natural or following a remedy, example chemical oxidation, result in low microbial biomass and microbial diversity, rendering biodegradation unlikely under existing conditions. Similarly, Microbial fingerprinting methods can be used to determine whether the overall microbial community has recovered or responded to remedial actions. While other environmental monitoring methods are more appropriate to detect and quantify known contaminant degrading microbes, several microbial fingerprinting techniques can be used to identify the predominant microbes present in the sample and to describe the microbial community. Data gathered from the microbial fingerprinting methods then can be used to evaluate the performance of the bioremediation strategy. Terminal Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphism Analysis what is it? Terminal restriction fragment length polymorphism was developed for generating a fingerprint of an unknown microbial community based on sequence difference within the 16S ribosomal RNA gene. It is based on fluorescently labeled PCR amplifications of a target gene and visualization of a collection of fragments of different sizes, which may be indicative of certain microbial communities. PCR amplicons are digested with specific restriction enzymes that cut the DNA molecule at known sequences. The size of each resulting terminal restriction fragment is then translated into peaks on an electropherogram and the patterns can be compared to a database to identify microorganisms present in the sample. Terminal restriction fragment length polymorphism is a four-step process. The first step is DNA or RNA extraction. Second step, PCR amplification. Third step, enzyme digestion. And the final step is fragment identification. The separated fragments are visualized by an automated DNA sequencer as a pattern of peaks on an electropherogram. Let's move on to phospholipid fatty acid analysis, PLFA. Phospholipids are a primary structural component of the membranes of all living cells and break down rapidly upon cell death. Therefore, the mass of PLFAs in a sample is a direct measure of the viable biomass in the sample. While all cell membranes contain phospholipids, not all organisms or groups of organisms contain the same PLFA types in the same proportions. Some classes of organisms produce unique or signature types of PLFA. Quantifying these PLFA groups therefore creates a profile or fingerprint of the viable microbial community and provides insight into several important microbial functional groups. PLFA analysis is similar to quantification of other chemical compounds present as mixtures, example volatile organic compounds, in environmental samples. So we have the process of this PLFA analysis. The first one is extraction. Two, separation by gas chromatography with flame ionization detection, and if necessary. The third one is confirmation of identification 
by mass spectroscopy. PLF analysis can also be combined with stable isotope probing to demonstrate that biodegradation is occurring by quantifying incorporation of the stable isotope level into biomass. Denaturing Gradient Gel Electrophoresis Analysis, DGGE. DGGE is a nucleic acid, DNA or RNA based technique used to generate a genetic fingerprint of the microbial community and potentially identify dominant microbes. DGGE profiles are most often used to compare differences or changes in microbial community diversity and structure between samples over time or space or in response to treatment. DGG usually encompasses a four-step process, so there are four steps of processing involved in DGG analysis. The first one is DNA or RNA extraction. The second one is amplification. Third, separation and visualization. And the final step is sequence identification. The amplification step uses PCR or polymerase chain reaction to generate a multitude of copies of a variable region within a target gene. DGG is another technique relying on the separation of PCR amplicons according to their sequence. The DNA sequence of this variable region is different for each type of bacteria. Thus, the PCR step generates a mixture of the gene segments, each representing a species present in the original sample. The third step of DGGE uses an electric current or electrophoresis and a denaturing process to separate this mixture based on the DNA sequence, producing a profile or fingerprint of the microbial community. For denaturing gradient gel electrophoresis, the identities of the dominant genera within the community are presented. Automated ribosomal intergenic spacer analysis. Auto automated ribosomal intergenic spacer analysis, or what we normally call ARISA, the acronym, is an automated fingerprint. It's an automated fingerprinting technique that specifically targets the non-coding internal transcribed spacer regions of the small and large subunit, that is the ribosomal RNA operon. Automated ribosomal intergenic spacer analysis targets the intergenic transcribed spacer regions that are located between the 16S and 23S ribosomal genes. ARISA has been most commonly employed for characterizing spatiotemporal changes among microbial communities from environmental samples. This technique exploits the highly variable nature of ITS, that is variability in nucleotide sequence and length, as well as the conservative nature of the flanking SSU or LSU genes to PCR amplify all ITS copies from mixed community samples using a fluorescently labeled primer. The resulting applicant fragments are then electrophoresed to separate them according to size, and the results are displayed as a series of peaks on an electrophorogram. The differences in peak patterns among samples are interpreted as changes in microbial community structure. Length heterogeneity analysis by PCL. In length heterogeneity PCL, a fluorescent label primer is used to determine the relative amounts of amplified sequences originating from different microorganisms. Labeled fragments are separated by gel electrophoresis and detected by laser induced fluorescence with an automated gene sequencer. 
LHPCL is used to evaluate the composition of the soil microbial community. Products are separated by size on a genetic analyzer and the fluorescence captured by the instrument software. The fluorescence data are converted into chromatographic profiles called electropherograms. LHPC analysis distinguishes different organisms based on natural variations in the length of 16S ribosomal DNA sequences. The application of the length heterogeneity PCR technique as a monitoring tool for microbial ecology has been shown to enhance and extend the current understanding of the dynamics of microbial communities in their specific environments. Single Strand Conformation Polymorphism SSCP. Single Strand Conformation Polymorphism SSCP analysis is a widely used screening method that allows you to identify different genomic variants in a large number of samples and in a broad range of organisms, from microorganisms to humans, depending on electrophoretic mobility differences. SSCP analysis detects sequence variations, as single point mutations and other small scale changes, through electrophoretic mobility differences. DNA that contains a sequence mutation, even a single base pair change, has a measurable mobility difference compared to wild type DNA when subjected to non denaturing or partially denaturing conditions. In this high throughput version that fluorescent SSCP, fluorescently labeled fragments are analyzed using automated capillary electrophoresis. SSCP allows simultaneous detection of several genomic variants in a large number of samples. Fluorescent in situ hybridization, FISH. Fluorescence in situ hybridization is a molecular biology technique that can be used to detect microorganisms known to biodegrade contaminants. Fluorescence in situ hybridization involves the use of a fluorescently labeled complementary DNA or RNA probe that is designed to bind to a specific region of the target DNA or RNA. The technique can be employed for the visual identification of species and often uses fluorescent microscopy to visualize where the fluorescent probe binds, that is location on chromosomes, tissue section, and or entire organism. FISH detects the presence of targeted gen genetic material in an environmental sample. FISH also estimates the number of and of relative activity of specific microorganisms or groups of microorganisms. To implement FISH, environmental samples are taken to a laboratory, and in a series of steps, a fluorescent dye is attached to a particular gene of interest in microorganisms or families of microorganisms. These targeted microbes can then be observed and the abundance and spatial distribution determined under a microscope by detecting the fluorescent light emitted. For the purposes of environmental investigation, the targeted microorganisms are typically ones capable of degrading specific contaminants. Fish can provide valuable insight for environmental remediation alone and in combination with other environmental monitoring methods like PCL. For example, this method can reveal whether key organisms needed for biodegradation are present in the sample material and allow estimation of their abundance, similar to other EMMs. However, this method can only allow investigators to explore their structure 
form and spatial distribution and association with other microorganisms. Fish signals can provide some information about activity of the target organisms, although no precise rate information can be obtained. Sandwich hybridization arrays. Sandwich hybridization arrays, SHA, are a DNA or RNA probe based method that can be used for rapid identification and enumeration of organisms. SHAs utilize two or more probes. One, the first is a capture probe, which hybridizes to complementary nucleic acids. Two, the bound nucleic acid is reacted with a second probe for detection, which is labeled with fluorescent, chemiluminescent, or colorimetric labels. The sandwich is achieved when the nucleic acids have complementary sequences and hybridized to both the capture and detection proofs. Microarray Microarrays are a collection of many short DNA strands called probes that are attached to a solid surface. Example is a glass slide. The probes are selected for their specific known DNA sequence to which only complementary pieces of DNA will bind. Considering the ever-growing threats of various types of pollution on the natural ecosystem, a significant study on the implementation of microarray in biomonitoring and waste management has been conducted. And this provides a comprehensive evaluation of the microbial diversity and community composition. Microarrays offer the ability to simultaneously detect and semi-quantitatively assess the relative abundance of thousands of different microbial biomarker genes as a comprehensive evaluation of the microbial community composition and its potential activity within an environmental sample. Microarray analysis offers advantages as size that require a comprehensive view of the microbial community and where a larger number of biomarker gene targets need to be monitored to assess biodegradation. Microarray analysis may provide valuable insight into biodegradation of emerging contaminants, for which little is known regarding the microorganisms and degradation pathways involved. The strength of the microarray approach is that Many species of genes can be monitored simultaneously, and the overall responses of a microbial community to perturbations such as implementation of a remedy can be monitored over time or compared within impacted and background zones. Thus, microarrays can provide valuable insights for environmental remediation and monitoring. Within environmental genomics, three major classes of microarrays have been developed. One, phylogenetic oligonucleotide arrays, which contain oligonucleotide proofs tar targeting taxonomic genes, example, 16S ribosomal RNA gene. Two, functional gene arrays, where proofs target genes encoding key enzymes involved in specific processes. 3. Community genome arrays, which are constructed from whole genome DNA of many different strains or species. Stable isotope probing. Stable isotope probing techniques are used to determine whether biodegradation of a specific contaminant can or does occur at a contaminated site. And this detects the presence of an added synthesized form of the contaminant containing a stable isotope. If contaminant biodegradation is occurring, the isotope will be detected in biomolecules, example, phospholipase DNA, 
and metabolize, example, carbon dioxide. Stable isotope probing determine whether biodegradation of a specific contaminant is occurring and identify the microorganisms responsible for this activity. For contaminants used as carbon and energy sources, stable isotope probing is an environmental monitoring method that can be used to determine whether biodegradation is occurring. Reveal An environmental sample is exposed to a specially synthesized form of the contaminant containing a heavy isotope such as carbon-13 as a label. After a predetermined time, a sample is recovered for isotopic analysis of the contained biomass and dissolving organic carbon. A unique feature of stable isotope probing, or SIP, approaches that distinguishes them from virtually all other environmental monitoring methods is that they do not require any prior knowledge of the microorganisms, genes, or enzymes involved in a specific biodegradation processes, and can therefore be applied to novel and otherwise uncharacterized contaminants. SIP approaches have now been used to characterize the biodegradation of many contaminants, including polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Fuel oxygenase, pesticides, and gas oil constituents, including benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylenes. Positive SIP data typically report the levels of carbon 13 enrichment in solvent extracted bulk or in individual fatty acids in the form of change in carbon 13 abundance. These data are obtained from either GCMS or GCIRA IRMS measurements. Data from SAP analysis can also be used to confirm the effectiveness of existing remediation processes or aid in the design of remediation approaches. Enzyme activity proofs. Enzyme activity proofs are chemicals used to detect and quantify specific activities of microbes in environmental samples. A unique feature of enzyme activity proofs is that they are the only environmental monitoring method that directly estimates the activities of microbes involved in biodegrading specific contaminants. Enzyme activity probe analysis are also conducted without prior cultivation of microbes or extensive sample preparation. These analyses are therefore simple to conduct and can provide a direct estimate of specific microbial activities at the time of sampling. Detect the transformation of surrogate compounds that resemble specific contaminants. Also, quantify the activity of organisms with specific biodegradation capabilities. EAPs are compounds that serve as alternative or surrogate substrate for the protein catalyst, responsible for the metabolic activities of microorganisms. These surrogate compounds are transformed by target enzymes into distinct and readily detectable products. As most enzymes are not functional outside cells due to rapid degradation or inactivation, there is often a strong relationship between the rate of transformation of an EAP and the number of active microbial cells that possess an active form of the enzyme of interest. The simplest EAPs, such as fluorescein diacetate (FDA) are transformed by common enzymes found in all microorganisms. Enzymatic hydrolysis of FDA can therefore be used to detect and estimate the total number of currently active organisms in a sample.
other more sophisticated EAPs are transformed. Only by specific enzymes responsible for the transformation of specific contaminants. These EAPs are therefore be used. Sorry, these EAPs can therefore be used to detect and estimate the numbers of organisms in a sample that are currently capable of biodegrading that contaminant. In many cases, EAP analysis are conducted in the laboratory using unmodified environmental samples. These analyses can detect and quantify the numbers of organisms with specific capabilities in relatively small samples. In some cases, EAPs have also been used in full-scale applications to determine in-situ rates of biodegradation or specific contaminants such as chlorinated solvents. EAPs can estimate the number of microbes in an environmental sample that contain an active form of the enzyme of interest. A single EAP analysis can therefore provide direct evidence that the microorganisms responsible for biodegradation are present and active at the time of sampling. Likewise, a time series of EAP analysis can quantify changes in these activities in response to natural or engineered changes in environmental conditions. Many of the EAPs used in laboratory analysis are highly fluorescent, and positive and negative results can be determined by observation with the naked eye. In more quantitative analysis, colored cells can be manually counted using an epifluorescent microscope and compared to the total number of cells stained with DNA reactive stains, such as acridine orange. The fraction of the total cells that are active can then be determined and recorded as the percent of total. Most EAP data are presented as total active cells per volume of groundwater and or per weight of soil analyzed. Metatranscriptomics Transcriptomics or metatranscriptomics is an approach implemented to gain functional insights into the activities of the complex microbial communities by studying their messenger RNA transcriptional profiles or express transcripts. The deployment of metatranscriptomics through the technological advancements in RNA sequencing has proved to be helpful in providing a snapshot of the whole transcripts that are actively expressed in complex bacterial communities, shedding lies on the active fraction of the community and their functional response to different environmental conditions. This cutting-edge technology also provides unprecedented insights concerning the genes that play a key role in contaminant biodegradation, especially in the various types of wastewater treatment systems. Functional profiling of microbial communities allows the correlation of microbial phylogeny to function and also reveals the specific microbial groups that are most affected and the key genes that are actively expressed in a particular environmental condition. However, despite years of research, the administration and interpretation of the enormous data provided by metatranscriptome profiling remain challenging. Up to date, there is no standard protocol available for analyzing the data. Hence, extensive experience and bioinformatics skills are needed to ensure reliable and accurate data reporting. Polymerase Chain Reaction Techniques, PCL PCL is a laboratory method that generates multiple copies of a specific DNA sequence, if present in a sample, representing microorganisms or groups of related microorganisms known to biodegrade contaminants. The high specificity afforded by PCL makes it very effective for species 
and strain identification of a wide range of organisms. PCR allows amplification of a, as little as a single piece of DNA or RNA, generating thousands to millions of copies of a particular DNA or, or RNA sequence. PCR has been used to detect microorganisms capable of degrading contaminants, such as petroleum hydrocarbons, pentachlorophenol, perchlorate, polychlorinated biphenyls, metals, radionuclides, and chlorinated solvents. PCR amplifies or makes copies of the genetic material of microorganisms to levels that can further analyze using other techniques. During biodegradation processes, microorganisms break down contaminants using enzymes. PCR can be used to detect, to detect the presence of either a specific microorganism or group of microorganisms that are known to be able to biodegrade a specific contaminant or group of contaminants, or DNA sequences that genes that regulate the production of enzymes that biodegrade or partially biodegrade these contaminants. Detection of specific genes or microorganisms capable of biodegradation of a contaminant provides a direct line of evidence that bioremediation may be possible at a site. The application of quantitative rare time PCR is synonym with the quantification of functional genes expressed by bacteria, which involve in the biodegradation of nutrients, particularly pollutants in the environment. This approach has been used for the quantification of genes or transcripts from environmental samples, which allows deeper understanding on the complexity of the metabolic functionality of the indigenous microbiome and thus initiate the full development of potential molecular markers to be deployed in specific polluted environmental assessment. On the other hand, qPCR results can reveal when contaminant using microorganisms are present but not thriving thus providing evidence that enhanced bioremediation options may need to be explored to stimulate the microbial community. Reverse transcripted PCR, that's RT-PCR, is a laboratory method that transforms RNA associated with biodegradation into complementary DNA that is then detected by PCR. RT-QPCR with RNA rather than DNA as the basis of the analysis quantifies the expression of target genes and activity of specific microorganisms. Depending on which genes are quantified, this information is indicative of the abundance of genes that encode for a particular enzyme or the abundance of microorganisms that are known to biodegrade specific contaminants. So this is a schematic of endpoint PCR and then quantitative PCR. Next generation sequencing, NGS. The recent arrival of NGS has drastically modified scientific approaches in basic, applied and clinical research. The major advance offered, offered by NGS is the ability to produce enormous volumes of sequence, either DNA or RNA data, cheaply, allowing for rapid sequencing of entire genomes or transcriptomes, respectively. NGS enables the biodiversity of complex environmental samples to be characterized rapidly. Environmental sequences generated by NGS can be compared to a reference library in order to screen 
not only for pests or introduced species or pathogens, but also for endemic species to provide a broader indication of environmental health and biodiversity. NGS could assess complex and low abundance populations that could not be done by using conventional sequencing methods. NGS is widely reported as a reliable technique that allows the complete and accurate identification of species within a microbial community. The NGS approach allows us to analyze not only abundant bacteria, but also scarce ones, which can also be key players for understanding the impact of environmental pollutants. GS454 FLS Titanium by Roche in Switzerland, MySec and HiSec 2500 or 2500 provided by Illumina Inc. These are all NGS platforms which are still actively employed by researchers for environmental metagenomic study. Conclusion What do we say? Environmental monitoring is critical to the protection of human health and the environment. As the human population continues to increase, as industrial development and energy use continues to expand, and despite advances in pollution control, the continued production of pollution remains inevitable. Thus, the need for environmental monitoring is still as great as ever. Bioindicators and biomarkers have the advantage that they measure the action of the pollutants in the real and complex environment. Clear and concise problem definition and careful planning are a prerequisite for designing a monitoring scheme. Though molecular tools have already brought about a revolution in the field of microbial ecology, as they have provided direct access to environmental microbes independently of their culturability, their true practical potential is just emerging in the field of bioremediation. So, thank you everyone for having time to listen and watch this presentation. I am very grateful for your time. And once again, please don't forget to like, share, leave your comments, and also the most important one, subscribe to this channel so that you will have access or be notified of any future video. Interesting videos will be coming in the next days. Once again, thank you very much and have a good afternoon.